Hi, welcome to the Master Before Rosh Hashanah Part 6. Today we're going to speak about probably the best known and most awe-inspiring prayer of the entire Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur liturgy, and that is the Unasana Tokov prayer, which can be found on page 480 in the Art Scroll, on page 144 in this edition of the Nusachari. There's three sections to the Nusana Tokov. The first section describes the scene on high on this incredible day of judgment. The total recollection of every action of every individual on this great day. The second section, Barosh Hashanah Yikosevun, describes the uncertainty of life itself, both in quantity and in quality. And the third section, Chuba Tfilut Stoka, ends off on a very high note where God says that He has patience for every individual waiting for each person to do Chuba to return to Him. And there are always these three things repentance, prayer, and charity. And with that, Hashem accepts, uh, it, uh, that those are things that Hashem accepts. And those are the things which are the great redeeming factors. But before we speak about, uh, give a couple of insights into the Masana Tokov itself, let's tell a bit about the history of where it comes from. And there's a great story behind it. The Masana Tokov was written about a thousand years ago. The story is there was a great bishop in the city of Mainz in Germany, and he had a friend, Rabbi Amnon. Rabbi Amnon was a close advisor of this bishop. And one day, this uh, bishop turned to his great friend and he says to this great rabbi, he says, I would like you to convert to Christianity. The rabbi was totally shocked. He says, just give me a couple of days, give me three days to think about it and I'll get back to you. No sooner had he left the house of the bishop and he thought, what do I even do? How can I have even given the impression that I am willing to convert to Christianity? And he went home and he fasted and he prayed and he ignored the bishop. Three days later, when he didn't turn up, the bishop sent his servants to go and collect him. And uh, he turned to him and he said, why didn't you come? He says, because you know what? My tongue, which gave you the impression that I, should, that I was even thinking about it, um, my tongue should be cut out from my mouth. And the bishop turned to him and said, no, 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 actually, I'm going to cut off your legs. I'm going to take off, I'm going to make you a, uh, um, I'm going to take away your legs because you didn't, your legs sinned by not following my orders to appear before me. And that's exactly what the bishop did. He cut off the rabbi's legs, sent him home, and this was the day before Rosh Hashanah. The next day on Rosh Hashanah, Rabbi Amnon asked to be placed before the ark. He was carried into the shore and his totally mutilated body was placed in front of the ark. And just before the Kedusha, the, 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 one of the holiest parts of the prayer, he asked to speak. And he said this prayer, Unasana Tokev, describing the greatness of the day. When he finished saying these words, he passed away. And a couple of days later, he appeared to one of his great students, whose name was Rabbi Kulunimus ben Meshulam, and he, this man himself, a great Kabbalist, the great Talmudic teacher, he asked him, he related to him the words of the Nasana Tokev, and he asked him if he could please spread these words and have it incorporated within the Machser of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and that's how the Nasana Tokev took, took, uh, took such a prominent and perfect position in our Rosh Hashanah Davening. So tomorrow we'll look at a couple of insights into the Masana Tokov itself. For today, have a good day.